The intelligent investor is one who is prudent with his business and invests based on amply researched facts and not because of a hot new trend that might crash and cost him all his money tomorrow. The author introduces us to two terms commonly used in the world of stock exchange trading, investment and speculating. Where an investment operation is one that ensures the security of your invested capital and a promise of profit while speculating is one that secures neither your capital nor your profit at the end of the investment period. Thus, an investor is one who is involved in ventures that will yield a long-term reward whilst a speculator is more interested in the short-term, bordering on immediate, reward. Thus, an intelligent investor is one who isn't willing to jump on whichever, hot stock, is offered because while rush tactics might work, the failure will be astronomical and even when it doesn't fail, it is not a sustainable plan for creating and growing wealth. An intelligent investor observes the company whose stocks he wants to buy, studies the history per gain and losses, and protects himself from any losses before moving forward to invest. This way, he only risks waiting to reap his reward. Whilst investing seems like the sensible thing to do for any individual seeking to build and sustain wealth but the stock exchange giants, Wall Street, profits more from speculation and as such they push the agenda and downplay investing as a means to make wealth. The speculator is prone to making rash decisions, try out tactics that have recently worked but like gambling, the house always wins in the end. The allure of speculation is sold by the house, because it has calibrated the odds to its favor. Unsuspecting, money-hungry individuals would dump their capitals and expect to cash out big only to be disappointed. Speculation works, but it isn't sustainable. Investment is a sure thing. It works now and will work long after. The intelligent investor knows this and stays ahead of the market. But what happens when the market suffers a setback? An unforeseen glitch that makes it harder to profit? How does the intelligent investor deal with inflation? What is inflation and how does it affect the market? Inflation is an instance where the value of money drastically reduces usually as a result of an increase in the printing of money or a large influx of money into the market. This occurrence affects the market greatly because whatever shares you had bought would have reduced in value and you have stocks with poor monetary value. How do you survive this as an investor? The obvious advice is to buy more stocks. Invest more in shares since the low value so that when the market heals, you'd sell them at a higher monetary value. But for the intelligent investor, the best bets are two viable options, real estate investment trusts and treasury inflation protected securities. Real estate investment trusts or rights are firms that own and source funds in the form of rent from commercial and residential properties. This might not entirely shield you from the effect of inflation but in the long run, it is a safe investment shield against inflation. Treasury inflated protected securities or TIPS are a much more secure inflation shield as they are US Treasury bonds and they go up when money value drops because they are backed up by the power and credit of the US government. TIPS ensures that your invested capital is safe and that your profit isn't affected by the effect of inflation. It is like borrowing money to the government for its running. The creditworthiness of the government is what makes this a better option for the wise investor to find shelter from inflation and its dire effects. An intelligent investor is also one who doesn't forecast or predict the future of a stock, the market based on past performance only. This way, he doesn't fall prey to the speculative approach that is commonplace in the stock market. He instead proceeds to invest in bonds. These are sustainable and provides capital security in an uncertain market. Bonds are safer and better than stocks because the price of a share can rise today and keep rising only for it to crash unexpectedly leaving your stocks worthless but bonds aren't prone to such occurrences. There is no guarantee that the market will do as good as it did yesterday but there are ways to ascertain to some level just what the future holds for the market. First, you study the real growth of the companies per their revenue and dividends, then you take into account inflationary growth and also the speculative growth or reduction in public appetite for stocks. An intelligent investor's portfolio a collection of his investments, should contain no more than 75% stocks and not less than 25% invested in bonds. This way, you are always having cash ready in bonds to bail you out when stocks crash. The author refers to this as a defensive investor's portfolio because it is concerned more with financial safety and security. When a defensive investor chooses stocks, he doesn't do so without research. The author suggests that it is always best to buy what you know. This involves a lot of fact-checking and research, all of which will be beneficial in the long run.
The intelligent investor invests in bonds and various funds in a bid to stay ahead of the curve and reduce risk of loss. He also makes his approach airtight by enlisting the services of a financial advisor. The advice to invest in bonds might be sound and a sure way to evade the inconsistencies of the stock market, but there are sides to it that might prompt you to show caution. If your only interest in investing in stocks is the cash profit, then you run the risk of losing it all. The intelligent investor might be tempted to invest in junk bonds, bonds that are considered below investment quality, because they are a means to get more cash quicker than the regular treasury bonds. But junk bonds are best if you are retired and looking to cushion your pension. But junk bonds do not assure the safety of your principal and as such should be turned to only when the interest rates peak since junk funds outperform other bond types. The intelligent investor should only consider it as a passive option and not a major obligation. He can although invest in foreign bonds, offerings from countries outside the US, but this is only if he is willing to take on much more risk than previously encountered. The risk factor in trading is why most investors sell their holdings in the face of a slight change in the market. The intelligent investor knows when to buy and when to sell because he has mastered the market and will avoid dying a trader's death. The average investor tells you to invest in every startup's IPO but this is speculative and doesn't guarantee positive returns. Unless you are able to pick each and every startup that will become successful, you will end up losing so much money instead. The intelligent investor knows which IPOs to invest in and isn't plagued with the guilt of missing out on a successful startup that causes other investors to panic and invest in the next big thing, which usually leads to loss. The usual practice is to hold stocks and sell them when they become overpriced and find shelter in bonds until another dip in prices. But the intelligent investor knows this an impractical plan because you cannot simply predict when the market will experience a dip or a rise. You can hold stocks and they'd be worthless or you sell too early and they become too expensive to buy back. It is pertinent that as an investor, you do not put all your money on one horse. If you put all your eggs in one basket, if the basket falls, so ends your wealth building. The author urges investors to diversify their portfolios. But as you seek to diversify, it is not advisable to indulge in foreign stocks, because it would mean you were robbing yourself of the security offered by your country's currency. The intelligent investor should consider investing in mutual funds, only because they have higher security and a better chance of competing in the market. A mutual fund is a collection of investments where money from investors is pooled and put into stocks, bonds, and the short-term money market. But this setup doesn't guarantee success every time. The intelligent investor should pick which funds are safest to invest to avoid buying a money pit. Another fund that might be a great tool for risk minimizing in the stock market is an index fund. One guarantee that funds will perform great and keep doing so is if their managers are top investors in the funds themselves. These funds outperform the earlier suggested mutual funds. Their only flaw is that they never perform beyond the limits of the market itself. But the intelligent investor cannot go it alone. He needs sound advice from seasoned experts in the market. A financial advisor can make the business of picking the right stocks to invest in much easier. This way you minimize risk, speculation and maximize profit. But you must first verify before you trust the financial advisor. Some might me out to con you of your hard-earned cash. It is important to note that whilst employing the services of a financial advisor, you must restrain yourself from making decisions you didn't run by them first. Always check with your financial advisor, S, before making any financial commitments to stocks or funds of any kind. Anyone can become an investor if they are willing to put in the effort to do as much research as is possible to pick winning stocks and funds. There isn't a training or certificate that qualifies one to be an investor. The layman can become one with the right amount of research and guidance. The average individual who is interested in trading in stocks and funds can do so without fear if they follow the advice given by the author. Firstly, when you pick a particular company to invest in its shares, look at their long-term goals. What are the plans they have for their own future? Secondly, consider the quality of their management. If the company is centered around paying the owners or managers huge sums, then you shouldn't invest there. Thirdly, if the company is lacking in financial strength, you'd be making a financial mistake that you'd not recover quickly from. Fourthly, you need to take into consideration the company's dividends per fiscal year and lastly, the current dividend report. Some companies have managed to falsify their financial reports to appear healthy and trick unsuspecting and prospective investors to invest money.
It is therefore imperative that the layman investor take a careful appraisal of the company's financial statements before venturing into doing business with them. How then do you avoid investing in these scam companies? When these companies make their financial statements public, always read the fine print, the footnotes, then read the statements backward to pick out any inconsistencies that might have been hidden amongst the seemingly perfect returns. The intelligent investor is one who doesn't invest in a possible future. Psychologists argue that humans are prone to creating patterns that don't exist based on a few coincidental events. This means that when a stock performs well for say one or two years, the instinct is to bank all your money on it because you believe it'll continue. The author urges investors to never fall for this ploy. Regard yourself as your own enemy in this respect and do your best to defeat the enemy. Sentiments are the foremost cause of losses in stocks and funds alike. For further accuracy in the stock selection, the defensive investor can simply follow the author's set rules. 1. Avoid companies with a total market value of less than $2 billion. 2. Go for the companies whose current assets are twice their current liabilities. 3. The companies must have common stock earnings for at least a 10-year period. 4. The companies must have consistently paid dividends for at least 20 years. 5. There must be a minimum increase of at least one-third in per share earnings in the past 10 years. 6. The company's share price should not be more than 15 times the earnings of the past three years. With these tools, it is possible for the layman to navigate the uncertain waters of the stock market and with the defensive investor's approach, be able to make maximum profit and minimize risk. The enterprising investor doubles as both an intelligent investor and a risk taker who takes bold and cunning steps to stay ahead of the market through the use of nifty stock market tools. For the investor who isn't afraid to take big risks, the enterprising investor, the regular guidelines for picking winning stocks won't cut it, he'd have to employ a new set of measures that engage his level of activity. Unlike the defensive, layman investor, he is more involved with the running of his portfolio and actively monitors the investments he has made, periodically tweaking the setup. For this kind of investor, the following are a few ways to secure the most profitable stock options. Practice. The investor isn't going to wake up and be good at picking the right stocks. He needs to start slow and practice with obvious stocks and continue from there, but not with real money. You can start with monitoring the market. Pick out the winners keep tabs as though you were banking on them with actual money. Always go for the companies run by the owners, not the managers. There is a higher chance they will do business for the general good of both them and their investors. You can also keep an eye on the yearly earnings. The enterprising investor can also get convertible bonds, bonds that can be converted into stocks and other securities. These kinds of securities offer the holders an option to diversify his portfolio and also a shelter to hide under in the event that either of the fund's prices dip and lose worth. These convertible stocks outperform regular stocks and are a reliable option for the enterprising investor who's not really down for getting stuck with an underperforming stock option. Think of it this way, a regular stock can rise in worth, meaning if you had it, you'd be able to cash out big, but the convertible bond can simply be converted into that same stock but now it'll be worth more. It's like copying and surpassing the current market. But if the stock it is mirroring does badly, it will do even worse, that's the one disadvantage of owning a convertible bond. The intelligent investor is always careful to make sure his investments are working for his best interests and he ensures this by painstakingly sifting through supposed good deals and picking the safest bet. How do you know which stocks to invest in? And how do you know when you are about to make a mistake? Well, the author carried out comparisons on similar yet different companies and identified why and how investors might be drawn towards investing in them. An investor can be moved to invest in a company's stocks because it appeals to his emotions. The company's slogan or a catchy ad might evoke a pleasant memory or he might simply associate the company's values with a fond memory. This is a bad move. An investor should never let sentiments form his reason to invest. A stock might be exciting, but will it perform well, and for how long? It is best to invest in a practical option than an emotionally inspired one. Public opinion can also form or influence individual opinion as well. Simply because a company is hailed as groundbreaking doesn't mean it is. The fact that a company isn't popular or in the media, a lot doesn't translate to poor returns. Do your own research and don't be bullied by peer pressure into making a mistake. The chance that a popular company will keep being popular is very low. 
If it relies on trends to stay relevant, it'll be irrelevant soon and your investment in it would have become worthless as well. The intelligent investor must realize that even the analysts can be wrong, their predictions can be poorly off, and you might be better off taking the words of the owner, S, instead. Certain companies declare their inability to turn in profit now and a further inability to ever be able to do so in the coming future. Analysts might have a different opinion but they aren't always right. If you were to observe the market diligently, you would of course the overperformers at first glance, but look closer, the numbers can lie or at least mislead. The initial valuation of a company might not truly reflect its true success and it isn't an indicator that it will do well in the next five years. Go for the less glamorous companies that produce steady returns, even though they're not in billions but they're on the rise and they're steady. Invest in the proverbial dark horse and not the shiny white horse, it just might be a whitewash. What happens when the intelligent investor isn't just an investor anymore but now a business owner? You don't have to think too hard, because the author posits then upon buying a company's share, you become a shareholder and as such own, a portion of the company and the company's staff all the way to the CEO, work for you. He goes further to say that as a shareholder, you have the power to improve your own stock. Sounds like a joke, yeah? But no, if you are convinced that the company isn't getting ran properly and as such the share price value is suffering, you can call for a restructuring of the managerial hierarchy, a bit of firing and hiring there and there. Now you might wonder if you really are this powerful, and the answer is yes when you buy shares. The company automatically starts doing business with you in mind. They work harder so they can give you a reward for your investment. You in effect, own the company, well, in part but you get the gist. You can make the changes you need to improve your holdings. So now, as an intelligent owner, you have to ask the hard questions. Is the managerial structure beneficial for me? And do the managers operate with my profit at heart? These are important before investment and even during continued investment. This way you are sure that you are making a wise decision to invest and continue to invest. Finally, as an intelligent investor, having all the tools necessary to win at the stock market, the urge to take bigger risks can creep in. The rush after getting two or three predictions right can push you to make an even graver loss. Taking risks is a part of the game but the intelligent investor only makes smart risks. How? First of all, he doesn't invest all of his holdings on his lucky number, he puts just enough that if it fails, he's still safe. Then he readies himself for a potential loss and mentally braces up for the aftermath. Any risk that the investor will be unable to recover from, both financially and emotionally, isn't a risk worth taking. Conclusion. Investment might seem like a drag, because its dividends usually take too long, but it sure beats dumping your money on any get-rich-quick scheme. The chances of getting a good return on speculating are a million to one but with investment, your invested capital remains unchanged and your profit comes correct. To effectively hone your skills as an investor, you must approach it with attentiveness and an avid desire to learn and a willingness to take expert advice. The intelligent investor can be anyone, if you use your tools right, it can even be you. Try this. If you haven't considered a viable retirement plan, then take a look at stocks and bonds you can invest in today.